So they, um, so they try to make this movie Clifford, and they're thinking, well, now, uh, who can we get? It's either going to be a 10-year-old... precocious 10-year-old. Yeah, precocious 10-year-old actor, or Martin Short. They did the right thing. They got Martin Short. Here he is, Clifford. <laughs> I laughed. Hi, How you doing, I'm Martin? good. I laughed every time you did that to Charles. Oh, Crow, you know? you knocked him over every I, time. I, I, I love you. I, I, this I little say you're the you. bestest uncle in the whole wide world. Yes, and then <laughs> boom, right into his gut. Oh. Oh, now, was he was on funny. a box at the time? Was he on a Just tell some us kind how of a riser? That. Yes, if, 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 if I were sitting here yeah. uh, with Groden, these would be cut down. I see. So I'd be sitting like this. Yes. Yes. And my shirt, my like collar would be bigger. Table. Yes. yes. And I'd say, hello, <laughs> do you have any extra butter for a little boy like me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what boy, a bad little you boy. Play on this child, I really thought there was no redemption for this child. Well, you know, he does end up as a kindly old priest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. And we were Boysville. <laughs> the only way he could be redeemed, this kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, but you know when you think of it, yes, all right, he, he, he blows up a few things and poisons people, but still... <laughs> To find that great if they had humanity. taken him, if Charles Groton hadn't, you know, <laughs> you can't break a promise to a little boy. That's right. Like Clifford. <laughs> Just take the kid to Dino Land and get it over. Dinosaur, exactly. Dinosaur, Dinosaur World. Land. Dinosaur World. Dinosaur World, whatever it was, and, and he would have been happy. He but you know what happy. you've done? Cody thinks there's a real place called Dinosaur <laughs> World now. Yeah. Well, with your lot. money, you could build one, couldn't you? Uh. Oh, I'm kidding. That hurt, and you're responsible for it. I'm not responsible. I, no, I, I no, guess wait I'm a second. of Claudia Cohen. Words All right, getting not out, out, I guess. Oh, I no, 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 listen. Gosh. I mean, certainly, uh, Reed, phone me around 2 in the morning. <laughs> Bring up the money thing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Reed, is you okay? <laughs> ah, get lost. <laughs> hey, Madonna! <laughs> he has been hitting the sauce a little since that one airplane oh, ride. Oh, no, listen, airplane. a man's allowed to now celebrate. Listen, did you see David with Madonna? <laughs> yes, Wonder I did. Wonder Mr. for the world, Isn't right? Isn't it wonderful when a master uses the language as Madonna <laughs> did? <laughs> yes. Uh, you, know, this is, you know, there's a great problem, though, is, is, is the arrogance of taking on David Letterman verbally. Yeah, I mean, it's that's pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah. And, uh... But you know, I mean, you realize that everyone in her world is just, you're great, Madonna, you're great. He's an idiot, you're great, you're great. <laughs> I love that you put that stud in your thing and put dark in there. Oh, you're great. <laughs> well, you know, this is, this is the downfall of a human being when they don't have some perspective. Well, but I think when she got out there, she realized what she was really up against. And, and I think maybe she may have changed her, her approach and, and just clammed up rather than had anything at all to say. I don't know. I think I agree with you that she's mm. trying to constantly push an envelope, but she doesn't know a line and it backfires. Mm. It just, well, yeah. there's a point. You can push to and then you lose people. But I did think he was hysterical. Though. Yeah, it was oh, funny, was And it? it was great television. Yeah. There's no question yeah, about it. Yeah, it was great. Just reading so, his, his reactions yeah. were, were good. So I can yeah. imagine the... No, the absolutely. It was, and you could feel his tension and you were with the audience. <laughs> and then they kept flashing to this sweet couple in the audience and they were like stunned. Oh. You know, saying, <laughs> And he was the, from Appleton, Wisconsin. Absolutely. Lucky and he kept saying, couple. look what you're doing. You <laughs> have and then he kept turning to the TV screen and saying, turn down your volume. Oh, it was hysterical. <laughs> it was very and, funny. And then he said, uh, she won't leave. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then um, she'll be, maybe she'll be back tomorrow. Oh, it, it, it was something to see. Well, there are certain people in this world you have great chemistry with. And you do, you've been on with David. And it's, it's there. But, I mean, with Charles Grodin, I'm, I think you two are so adorable together. Well, Chuck Groden is one of the great actors of all. You know, he never breaks up, and he never he never loses the character, <laughs> and, and he improvises continually through the movie, and you never know what he's going to say, and you either yell cut or you just keep going. I mean, there it's it's in the film. A lot of the stuff that was improvised was not written in. The oh yeah, I mean, he would say at one point he'd say, "Look at me like a human boy. You can't do it, can you?" Or uh, at one point we're talking about uh, I, I, I I've. I've said to Dabney Cullen, I think he has a nice wig, and Ch Ch Chuck is reprimanding. You see, you can't tell a person uh, that, that who wears a wig that it's a nice wig. <laughs> and I say, but why? It's the bestest wig in the world. But he doesn't want you to know. <laughs> right that's in front the, of that's, that's the script. But then he adds, and by the way, what makes you a big... How do you know so much about wigs? Well, now you have to... Say something. Yeah, so I start saying, because my teacher used to wear a wig, and she let me play with it at recess. <laughs> And that was all, that was, that was that little, yeah, that's funny. We'll be right back.
with Marty and Clifford in a moment. That's right. There's little Clifford dancing. Who are these? We uh, we called for uh, the. Uh, we went to an agency in, in L.A. Amazons are us, and uh, <laughs> every dancer was had to be six foot three and over for that scene. Really? Because I'm five eight, eight, so six three is here. So that's a normal height, and that's a ten year old. Yeah. So you weren't bending, crouching at all. Uh, well, he did some nice little knee bends. No, no, no there, there were certain times. No, 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 it was, it was, it was yeah. ramping. And again, if uh, if if Charles and I were heading toward the camera. Uh, I would be, uh, he'd be on a ramp, and then when we passed the camera and you walked this way, we'd slip a real little mm. tenure over there. Well, let's take a look at a clip while we're, while we're talking about it right now. Of course, Mary Steenburgen, who was here yesterday, Charles Grodin and Dabney Coleman, it's a terrific cast, and Martin Short. We should probably tell him in a minute, too, what Mary said about him. Yeah. Now, you know, I don't think there's anything more meaningful to me than the welfare of our, our employees. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, this is, this is my nephew, Clever. This is, say hello to my boss, Mr. Oh, oh. Hey, a cute little fella. Hi, Sonny. Good morning, Mr. Ellis. My, that's the bestest looking wig I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's, the, that's, that's not a wig. Please. Oh. You said it was a wig? No, no, no. You, you called it a rug. No, you? no, no, no. You misunderstood me, son. I never said you were a wig, sir. Good, good. No, no, you know. It's not a wig. I know that, sir. Come on. Kidding? It's not a rug. Either. <laughs> yeah. Just don't worry about that. Right, don't worry about that. <laughs> That's the least of the habit he made. You know, again, the main thing about Grodin is that just his little eye thing to the hairline. Oh, he's just oh. up and down. And Daphne Coleman's fact, directed by Paul Flaherty. You know, this is the first time that anyone has ever done an impression of Charles Grodin, to my knowledge. Really? Really. No. Oh, Chuck is great. Chuck, you know, has a million... Well, Chuck, you know, I call him Chuck. Um, <laughs> no one else calls him Chuck. Do you know the other thing? I'll tell you in a second. But I was going to say that, the, you know, Charles has written a book on his... And he's a million stories mm -hmm. about show business. And he's written a book. So whenever he tells you a story, you like, Oh, I remember the time I was working with Candy Burke. Well, it's in the book! <laughs> you know. Um, like we're like all we supposed to know what, yeah, yeah. what page it's on, you know. <laughs> it's in the book. <laughs> He's adorable. She has never given a bad performance. Oh. He's just great. No. You know, I'll tell you one quick story, because I, I want to talk to you a little bit more, but... Jack Parr and Charles Grodin and I had dinner with our wives, okay? Wow. When and was this? this was about th two, two months ago. What? Yes. Yes. I must have been out of town. You Go were, ahead. You were out of town. You were at home like this. At so 20, I'm sitting between. Stop it. Well, I'm kidding. Go ahead. You're going to get me in trouble. She's going to think I put you up to it. You did. But you did. <laughs> But you're doing great. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> if a subject came up, and I'm not kidding you, the island of Tonga came up, and Jack Parr was telling a story about Tonga, and Charles Grodin said, you want to hear about Tonga? I'll tell you about Tonga. <laughs> All of a sudden, we're, take me back to Tonga, he said. It was uh, unbelievable. What a great dinner that would be. Yeah, it was Jack a lot of... said, Tonga, this is all true. Right? <laughs> and, and Chuck's saying, I know about Tonga. What's in the book? Yeah. <laughs> No, now, I know everywhere you go, they want to hear Katherine Hepburn, right? You know? Not really, but we will. Well, there's a woman here in the audience. But I got I want to hear Katherine Hepburn. Just one line from Katherine. I was stunned by Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think she's bloody idiot. Okay. She now, is. you got to do Jerry Lewis with just a touch of Georgie Jessel in there for me. Well, can I tell you, Reed, <laughs> what a joy and a thrill and all good stuff. <laughs> to be here with you and to be promoting a film like Clifford because it's a super, super thing. It's a man who's playing a kid who's a boy and it becomes like the thing. <laughs> one night on the Disney Channel with Jerry. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you were reviewing the Martin Lewis years, uh, you know, one of those... It was things. very exciting. I'd never met Jerry. I didn't understand why you were there, because you did him occasionally? <laughs> because, truthfully, Jerry Lewis is the 
one of the true consistent influences of every major comedian working today. Uh -huh. If you talk to Steve Martin, if you talk to Chevy Chase, if you talk to Tom Hanks, they will all say, at some level or another, at uh -huh. one point or another, they did a Jerry. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it could be that much, but it's a note to Jerry. Well, he gets I, them all on the telephone and I, 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 think it's, I think it's imperative for people to respect the Oh, influences. absolutely. Yeah. And so you yeah, went absolutely. on the show just to Out of be a total part sense of, of respect, wow. absolutely. It, it was terrific. Yeah, it was great. Well, you know, we, we just had three cameras rolling for about two hours. Oh, and I, love, you need. I love those old tapes of the two of them together, Martin and Lewis. You know, oh, weren't they funny? Fabulous stuff. Yeah. Well, look, you got a series opening up on NBC soon? Yes. It's a <laughs> show within a variety show. Yeah, it's going to be, um, I'm going to play myself. Martin Short, children, wife, a guy living in Hollywood in a normal, normal way of living in Hollywood, while at the same time having his own television show, so you can incorporate any idea you want. I wanted to be able to, to be like the guy sitting here, but also do all the characters I've ever done in new ones. So I was trying to figure out a show a that could help both. himself. Yeah. And ambitious. have the family thing going. Right. It's a hit. No, yes. no question. Something oh, different. well, no listen, about it. I, and, and she is a piece of it. <laughs> As she does with everything. Yeah. What else is me? <laughs> Clifford opens today, Marty. Today, thank you very, very much. Great to have you. Thank you so much. We'll be back with our designer room makeover in a moment. It's going to be a great thing.